Well, we're heading down to the GSL model car contest. Yes. Which is probably the most robust yeah. competition oh, for automotive subjects. Scratch built brass automobiles. Just amazing. Just amazing. Highly right. detailed and, and some straight out of the box plastic models yeah. that are, you know. And while it tends <laughs> to be a very small show in terms of the number of models and the number of people, right. it's also not uncommon for there to be four continents yes, represented, represented because it's, <laughs> it is the, the top end of yes. automotive competition. People come far and wide. People come far and wide. Uh, now, we're also putting a much longer version of this show up if you want to see like everything that was entered. And a link, doink, is appearing right up in here right now that can take you over to the GSL channel because we actually have a GSL channel yeah. for just GSL stuff. And you can go over there and take a look at that. Much longer version of the same thing if you want to see that. Yes. Otherwise, you can just pick up the highlights of the, oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, intense yeah, winners was, uh, of the competition yeah, here on the channel. It's just incredible. So yeah. check this out, the GSL. Well, the opening night, first uh, night, and all the models started drifting in. It's neat <laughs> to see. This is Mark Gustafson. He's the founder of the Feast. This is the 26th one, but it's been going on for a long, long time. These days, it's only held every two years. Wow. I think the first 15 or something that was held every year. Wow. Oh, looks like we have a 19, I'm going to guess a 65 uh, Buick Wildcat. Look at that. It has the chameleon paint. I love chameleon paint. Wow. All detailed. I wonder if it starts and runs. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. The, I haven't figured out how they do this flip-flop chameleon mm, paint. But metal flake. It changes colors depending on what angle you're looking at the car from. Right. And it changes colors based on the, the type of light. Well, there's a lot of different categories for the cars, and everybody is after this. These are the awards. But I think the real satisfaction is building something like this amazing motorcycle. Look how nice that turned out. Man, they've even got the discoloration on the tailpipe correct. Look at that. It it's looks like they've been running beat. it. <laughs> heat beat. <laughs> heat, heat discoloration. It's just amazing. Wow. They've been driving this thing around, I think. This is the car that won Best of Show wow. two years ago. This oh. is a Lotus Catrum Super 7, but highly modified, mm -hmm. highly, highly modified, wow. and totally scratch built. Imagine that. Look at the detail. All that machining, I mean, that's all machined metal. Wow. Except, of course, for the stuff that isn't machined metal, like the rubber, the rubber and the wire and, <laughs> and the headlights, which you can tell are cast belt. out of acrylic or something. <laughs> One of the debates that comes up is when you're scratch building, should you scratch build your tires? Absolutely. Yeah, why not? Uh, there is a great book by Gerald Wincrove called The Complete Car Modeler. Wow. And that will tell you how to scratch build tires. Mm -hmm. Check out those seat belts. My goodness, did they have the elves from the shoemaker make those? What blows my mind is the tiny, tiny stitching present in both the seat belts and the seats. Yeah. You don't actually see those with the naked eye. You've got to zoom right in. Mm. But there's this microscopic stitching there. I have right. no idea how they did that. No. From this angle, you can really tell that this is a modified Super 7. The whole back end is especially customized. But it's <laughs> definitely a Lotus Super 7. Yes. Check that out. A lot of different kinds of cars show up, a lot of different categories. Oh my goodness, look at the rat rod. Oh my gosh. This is really cool. It's kind of a new trendy thing that's going on right now, the rat rod. Sort of pays homage to Rat Fink and uh, Ed Roth, but I don't think Ed Roth ever built one. I don't think so. Where a lot of these cars are scratch built, uh, the majority of them are not. They're just kits that you would buy. Uh, Sometimes old kits, sometimes modern kits, but highly, highly detailed, or they're just not going to compete at uh, this level of competition. A lot of these cars have some really terrific paint jobs. Check out these flames. I wonder how they do those. I'd love to know how they do that, because I've never figured it out, but mm. I'd love to be able to put that kind of paint onto a model. That just looks Especially amazing. Especially a model. Oh, check this out. It's a 48 Ford. 
Boards are always neat. Mm -hmm. This one's such a clean build. I just can't believe how nicely they've put this together. That's just exceptional. There was a special category this year just for Corvairs. Mm, look out, Ralph Nader. <laughs> yeah, the, the tuck and roll suspension, I used to call it. But these are pretty neat. A couple of them had V8s put in them. <laughs> We both have sort of a warm spot for Corvairs. I guess it's a warm spot. I'm not sure. <laughs> a warm, wet spot, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I learned to drive in one. But they're so. fun. They're just a fun, fun car. And there was a special category called If I Had Designed It, so you could <laughs> redesign a car. Oh, a 58 T-Bird with a removable hard top. My goodness. My that was a, a neat trend back then, oh, the, the man, convertible yeah. hardtop. Now they've kind of come back. They have. But for a while, that was the rage until people realized you couldn't have a trunk. Oh, no. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, but here we have a convertible oh, hardtop favorite 58 bird. bird. Mm, I love it. I love those. Oh! We decided to put Bat Fink into the competition. Oh, why not? He, he didn't win anything, but no. he, he put in an appearance. There was a lot of Ed Roth stuff here, yeah, as there always is. Everybody loves the Ed Roth oh, models. Oh, of course. And Daryl Starbird models. Oh, look at that. If you remember Daryl Starbird, he was a contemporary of Ed Roth, another one of these artists in fiberglass. This was his best-known car, the Predicta. Ah. Just an amazing car. And look who turned up in the crowd. Isn't that There's amazing? Daryl Starbird himself. Nice. The man came to see the models of his cars. There you go. There was a real whimsical nature to hot rods back in the I'll 60s. I'll say there was. Anything you could dream up, including yeah. putting a foam booth into a hot rod. There you go. You remember foam booths? Yeah, <laughs> there were two or three of them. You see, for the kids out there, they don't know. I think there's only like two left in exactly. the whole world. But and there was this Wyoming. thing called a payphone. <laughs> And this thing is 3D printed. That's the latest and oh, greatest. Yeah. A bone car 3D printed. And <laughs> check oh, out no. the worst paint jobs ever created by Earl Scheib for $49.95. <laughs> now, at the far opposite end of Earl Scheib, look at the paint job on this Chevy. And look at the inlaid wood. Holy cow. Oh, my. Just, and oddly enough, the mufflers are in that coffin. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not just cars. Look out, this beautiful bicycle. Oh, Holy yeah, I had one crap. like that. Mine wasn't a Raleigh, but it was like that. And military models. The the military guys are certainly welcome here as long mm -hmm. as it's an automotive subject. Hey. And as always, these guys just knock it dead. Yes, they do. And Don Berry brought one of his scratch-built 30-second scale oh fire engines. Gosh, He's been that. building these things for as long as I can remember, like, mm. I don't know, 30 years mm. of scratch building. I used to make his wheels for him. <laughs> I don't think these have my wheels on it, but they sure look like the wheels I used to make for wow. him. And this thing is a wheel standing stage oh, coach. Oh my goodness. Back in the 60s and 70s. I think people are still doing this. <laughs> they build these crazy wheel standers, just comical wheel standers, and then take them out to the drag races. Uh. Not, not with the intention of drag <laughs> racing, but just as a show for people. They're just really fun to watch. Oh, uh, where's the strong box? <laughs> but the, the build quality on this oh one my blew gosh. my mind. So detailed. No and kidding. Pretty much scratch built. I think there's a few components here that he oh scavenged my. from places but his friend was building one they were going to compete together <laughs> so this gives us a chance to see how it goes together because oh, oh his my. friend didn't get his done but here we can see how the thing went together the brass and plastic scratch building that is crazy. and that's neat to be able to see that how the whole thing comes together with the brass sections and the plastic mm. areas they've got a special area here just for display models wow. Ooh, and check this out, a twin-engine dragster. Oh, my. Predominantly scratch-built. He scavenged a few parts for the engines and so on out of kits, but all of the pulleys and rear end and the entire frame and everything, all scratch-built. Uh, resin castings used for the heads. Mm. So he got those from someone else, and then they cast those out of resin. But what an absolutely beautiful, predominantly scratch-built model. Yeah. Just an amazing, amazing level of detail. And Gee, I guess. While the floor is filthy. The, I was just going to say, right down the, to the oil stains the on the floor. The build is certainly clean, even if the mm -hmm. floor isn't. That's one of the cleanest put-together models. 
I think my favorite models this year were all here in the competition division, race cars. Wow. Just sort of turns out that way. Look at the paint job <laughs> there here. You go. That's some crazy stuff. But a lot of these race cars are just so well put together. Imagine that. Look at the ah. interior detail and yeah. this Ferrari. The, the piping on the seats and the seat belts, just right. mind boggling, right. mind bogglingly accurate and just beautiful. Oh, check this out a 1 8 scale short track modified. Oh my goodness. <laughs> sort of reminds me of what we see at Wild Bills. Exactly. This one's a little too clean for that. Well, <laughs> the engine's on the side. Yeah. <laughs> but totally. Totally scratch built, one eight scale short track. Oh my goodness! Ah, oh, just mind-bogglingly beautiful build. Right. One of my favorite cars this year. This was one of my favorites, mostly because of the paint job. Check that out. It's one of the most beautiful paint jobs I've ever seen, and just an incredible build of an incredible dragster no too. No kidding. It's really challenging working with these metallic paints. This I can't way. imagine on that small of a, a detailed car. And look at the mural work here and, and the lettering. Just spectacularly well done. Yeah. And then the clear coats over it. There's just depth to the right. paint job. The frame is all metal and uh, most of the detail work here also small small metal detail pieces mm -hmm. front mounted blower i've always got a kick out of seeing <laughs> that but there you go front mounted blower but what really blew my mind was the paint job oh mine too just incredible beautiful and this drag bike oh, I, I don't even know what to say about this drag bike mm. i yeah. I kind of thought it was the best of show model. It's really hard to make those determinations. Right. I would not want to be a judge here. No. But uh, that's cool. When you get into these really top end models like this, it's really hard to separate one from another. Oh, neat. Just a beautiful 100% scratch built model. Right. The fine, fine machine work here. Just mm. incredible detail, incredible wow. paint. Amazing, amazing Just work. amazing, yes. And we got to see how he went about doing it. This <laughs> is the jig he used for bending the frame, and he's got another frame in here all being soldered together oh, on wow. his bending jig. And also the body panels. How do you make body panels for a thing like this? So you carve wooden bucks, and then what he was using was plastic. Some people use brass, but wrapping plastic over the wooden box and then carefully finishing that out. And mm. there's your body panels. Goodness. A lot of these cars have been built that way. But here's the model that ultimately won top oh honors. My. The best of show, this semi hot rod. Oh, wow. Just 100% scratch built. Wow. And materials here are brass and plastic and lots and lots and lots of stainless steel. Oh my goodness, how does anybody work with that? I, I can't even imagine, but all oh, this chrome man. is highly polished stainless steel. That's yeah, how he something. got the look wow. of the chrome. And this is the truck he was copying. It's an actual hot rod built out of a <laughs> semi with this really neat oh. skull paint job Look on it. The graphics, that's neat. And uh, here's the construction technique. Brass for all mm. of the frame and suspension pieces. A lot of the parts here were machined oh, as no opposed kidding. to bent from stainless steel. Wow. All machined wheels here. That's really beautiful. Right. And then, of course, this really elegant paint job placed over the top of all of that. A lot of the body panels here are plastic, mm. just like they are on the drag bike. Right. Same exact technique for building those. But I think the real takeaway here is the machining. No kidding. And the stainless steel work. Just no I've never seen that. people working in stainless steel like this. And then the brass construction of the frame and all of the scratch building going on there. Mm -hmm. Easy to see how this thing was able to pull down best of show. Right on.
Well, I think everybody had a good time. We certainly did. It looked like they're having a good time, <laughs> and we sure had a good time. Glad I wasn't one of the judges. I'd still be there looking. Oh, I'd just be embarrassed. I mean, there's no way I could even hope to pick the best of the best here. It's mm-hmm. just so challenging. Mm. But uh, at this point, all that remained was for everybody to pack up their treasures and Mm -hmm. head back for wherever the heck it is they came from. Right. Ready to start building their next set of models. And they'll all be back here again in two years to fill the contest hall with the best miniature automobiles in the world. Well, there you have it, the GSL oh, wow. number 26. 26, that's wow. cool. They've been going on for a long time. They have, and I missed the first 24 of them. So. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, it makes me feel so old, oh. especially nowadays when they only occur every two years. Oh, my gosh, uh, rip, the math. Yeah. <laughs> And then I think there was a hiatus where there weren't any for a little while. Oh, gee. Yeah, so oh, it's been a thing. But it's been going on for a long, long time. You can tell just by looking at Mark Gustafson how long it... <laughs> None of us are aging all that well. There's gray hair and all oh, kinds of dear, stuff. But, yeah. Oh, well, it, it is happens. what it is. But it so amazing to see uh, the level of competition that exists at right. the GSL Model Car Championship. That was fun. Mm-hmm. If you uh, if you want to see a longer version of the edit, there is that on the GSL channel, mm-hmm. and you can get over to the GSL channel by clicking this link up in here, that will take you over to the GSL channel. Right. And there's a long long cut that shows pretty much everything that was entered yeah. in the competition, and some older GSL because we have the, the GSL channel where it's just GSL stuff. That's all it is. That's all it is over there. So you might get a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't been over to the Toy Man channel, oh, you want to get over to the Toy Man channel. And of course, you want to subscribe to the Toy Man channel. Right. And you can do both those things by clicking zoink, <laughs> the blue button, which is appearing right here, right now. Yes. So do click on that if you're not a subscriber. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It just means that we notify you whenever we <laughs> upload something. Yes. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in one week with a ghost railroad. So check that out.